Hey class, Tank Ministry back here. I am uh, doing some videos for KnifeNav. You guys are, this video is going to be about um, tech and point to points. So you guys are going to be seeing um, some estimation for tech and point to points, as well as some gotchas for the questions. Um, and lastly, we'll just go through one example uh, and show you kind of what that's going to look like. So, uh, first off, um, for uh, tag can point to points, understand that you know, just like a wing T, we have a point of origin, okay? And um, a tag can works, uh, you know, like any other ground based navigation, only where the radials kind of come out. And um, you're going to, you know, on, in your jet, you'll, or your plane, you're going to see um, that your VDHI is going to show an arrow pointing directly at the station. Um, and, and the uh, tail of the number two needle would be the radial that you're on. And this is um, this would be considered uh, bearing to uh, the station. Okay, so you have you have your triangle uh, pointer pointing to the station or bearing to the station, and then you have this is the radial uh, right here, which is the same thing as uh, like bearing from the station, okay. And the only other thing I'd say is um, if they ever say the the radial, or I'm sorry, the um, the the nav aid's name, um, and then they in parentheses they give you um, like one two three at four five something like that. If it's packaged together like this, what they're doing is they're giving you a uh, a radial and a DME. Okay, so if like if, if the so if ATC tells you to um, navigate um, to the, the nav aids one two three at forty five, then you're going to be navigating to a radial DME. Okay, um, and so a lot of the situations you're going to see on the exam is um, ATC tells you to navigate from your position to a nav aid one two three at forty five. And then um, maybe they'll say like, "Hey, you see that you're bearing, um, you're you're on the um, like so zero five zero uh, bearing to the station." Well, that's basically saying this it's zero five zero bearing to the station, and then they'll give you maybe like thirteen nautical miles or something like that. Okay. So if that's the case, then you know you've got to take the reciprocal value. So add 180 degrees to 150. And now you're going to be plotting uh, 230. All right. So 230 at 13 nautical miles. Um, and some of you got, one of you guys asked in class was, like, hey, can you estimate it? Um, let's see, and the answer is yeah. Uh, you can do it before you put your pull your wheels out. And the reason why you would want to do that um, is because you get to see the scales first. Um, because sometimes we get we get in a rush, we start plotting before we actually see um, both scales and kind of and uh, digest those. The, the reason why it's important to see them both is because if you plot with one um, scale. And then you, you plot with the other scale, then you just you just mix scales, and you can't do that. So if it's um, if you're uh, 13 nautical miles and 45 nautical miles, you can actually use the same scale for those two. So it's good to know that beforehand. So being able to estimate first is good. So the first thing you want to do is put um, as plot your station. So for estimation purposes, uh, you'll want to plot 230 at 13. So 230, this is 180. Two seven zero three six zero zero nine zero two three zero is going to be over here somewhere. Um, so one eight zero plus forty uh, is is two twenty. So it's almost like it's a little over halfway. So there's there's two three zero, and um, and I'm hesitant to draw the, the line this big because the you know the other one's got to be if you, you got to compare the two and say how many times bigger is this one. And this one, if you times this by two, it's 26. Uh, the next one is 33, so it's over three times the size. Okay, so you, so again, you're like, okay, I'm gonna stop right here then. Okay, so that doesn't matter. And then I can do one, two, three, 
at 45, which is over here somewhere. So 10, 20 over here somewhere. So you're going to do three times the length. One, two, three, about three times a little bit more maybe. And then you'll plot that position. And then you just kind of you do a little bit of estimation like that. So you draw a little arrow saying this is the direction I want to go in. Um, once you do that, you can kind of like move it over to the center to get it like a direction of what what direction you want to go in so clearly it's you're not in you're going to be less than uh than one two three at 45 because the angle that's there is not as steep as as this one so it's going to be something like this so you're looking at between zero nine zero and um like one two zero something like that so maybe it's like one zero zero all right so that's the, the course that you're probably going to get. And then you look at the distance between the two. So this one compared to, to this one, and this looks longer. So if it's 45 is what they're using, then maybe this leg is like 60, okay? So maybe it's like 100 at 60. And that would be my, my swag estimate there, and I think I'd be okay uh, or pretty close to that if I, if I do it right. So we'll see. All right, so now we have to plot them. Um, use your, uh, again, the radials that we found, so 230 at 13. And um, you can use the, you can multiply out the scales again. So if you're like, um, you know, if you don't like uh, 13 knots, you want to do more than that, you can. But the problem is that you got to do both of them. So you can't times 45 out twice. So I'm stuck with using the big numbers. So you use 13. There you go. Sorry for the big dot there. Um, and then 1, 2, 3, and 45. Okay. Um, and then circular destination. And then you want to move them so that they are par or, yeah parallel with the vertical line. See that? So you have both dots, here's one dot, here's two dots, see how the little edge is like overlapping over this line. Uh, so this line is parallel uh, to this one, um, to this imaginary line here. And then you're going to count them out, uh, these uh, blocks, to measure the distance. So uh, you have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, maybe a little bit more than 50. you got to be really, um, you got to count carefully. So maybe a 52. 53, something like that. Yeah, maybe 52. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, maybe 52. Uh, and 110. 110 at 52 is my answer. Okay. Um, so that's how you estimate uh, using TACAM point to points. Um, the gotchas on this one, and so this is the only other thing I'll talk about, is the scale. Okay, guys, I, I cannot emphasize enough that this is a gotcha for a lot of people on the exam so if you're not uh familiar familiarize yourself with both scales okay know that you, if you use one you got to use the other one uh the other component needs to use the the same scale you can't use multi, you can't use different scales i can't use um the big numbers here with the small number over here or vice versa uh it doesn't work well okay that's for any calculation on your whiz wheel if you're using these big numbers, you got to stay with the big numbers for all your other uh, numbers for that calculation. Okay. Um, so that's besides that and the reciprocal value for the way that they describe uh, TAC ends, um, that is it for, for TAC and point to points in terms of gotchas. Uh, I hope your studies are going well. Don't forget about this type of question. I know that you can get. Uh, overwhelmed with your uh, wind calculations and jet logs and everything else, but there are some of these questions on the exam. I don't want you to forget about them, so make sure you're doing a couple of these. Make sure you finish all of them in the book, because I don't, I don't believe that you can get enough of these to, to get good at them. And, um, and if you have any questions, text your instructor and get to that jet log.